What's going on, everyone? Well, gonna go riding on Sunday. It's supposed to be 60 and sunny, so we're gonna take this thing out and uh, beat it. It's supposed to be really nice. The problem is it's gonna be super wet. So you can obviously see that I had my, my flag on there from going to off-road park a few weeks back, which I didn't take any video of like a dumbass. But uh, yeah, so full garage today. I got the, uh, I got my, my S10 Blazer up on the hoist here, doing a little, getting ready to do a little DOM steering work to it. It's got uh, Ford high pinion uh, Dana 44 in it and a nine inch rear. So just to uh, tell you a little bit about it. it uh, it works pretty good. It's running on 38s. It's a fun little toy. 513 gears, Detroit lockers, chromoly shafts. You know, it's we we beat it up pretty good here. I had to put a new door on it because I caved the door in. <laughs> you can still see the back door got a little bit, got a little bit, but I had to put a new new used door on it because I smashed it in on a tree. So today's project, I. Uh, did some digging upstairs, and I found some old intercooling pipe. Um, I've actually got some turbos up there that work nice on the tailing too, but uh, that's not what I'm gonna use this uh, intercooling pipe for. Uh, this was left over from a Fummins project. If you guys don't know what that is, that's where you put a Cummins motor in a Ford. Um, I built custom intercooling piping and uh, intercooler and all that stuff. But anyways, this is left over. So what I'm gonna use it for is a snorkel. I am a little concerned about the water this spring here in Michigan. So I know last spring when I was riding, not that it's deep, deep, it's just there's a lot of it and you run through, you know, it'll probably come up to the top of the tires. So, but you run through a lot of it. And last spring we did like an 80 mile ride and my filter was completely soaked and uh you know it's not good for the motor uh, although no water got into the motor i checked there was no dirt or anything in there i am going to see about building a custom at home and i saw another guy that went right through this little vent area here and he brought it up here so i'll probably do something like that and then i'll have to find a 180 rubber to kind of come off and do a 180 back down. But uh, that's it, I'm gonna do that little project and take her out for a rip on Sunday. It's supposed to be a beautiful day here in Michigan, so I'm gonna get out and enjoy myself. I gotta get some new ORV stickers. State's gotta get there, whatever, 50 or 60 bucks out of me. And we're gonna go test these black waters out, see how uh, they do in the trail conditions when they're muddy and slimy and it's a little bit of everything where I'm going. Um, if you're familiar with Michigan, I'm gonna go to St. Helens, which probably everybody and their brother's gonna be there. But uh, it could be a pretty good sized group of us, probably 10 units out there, and we're not gonna be ripping, going real fast, but uh, it's more of a good time for some, uh, everybody to get together and kind of uh, just cruise and do a little mud running and, and uh, just get messy, get out. If you're like me, you've been cooped up and haven't been able to play a lot in the winter. I mean, I have this thing, but uh, we, we only took it out once and uh, I broke a bunch of shit in it. So, but uh, you know, I got it stuck on the hoist now. So I got this the tail and wedged in here. Anyways, just a little update. I'll get a little video of it of what I end up with. But I'm gonna take her all apart right now and get going on it. Cause I actually have a a Saturday off so I'm gonna work on that and then Sunday we're gonna go up and ride for the day so I'll talk to you well here it is not exactly how I wanted it to turn out but uh, you know I didn't cut a big hole up here so right here this is just a test one here um, I ordered a new TIG welder once that shows up I'll put some uh, I'm gonna redo this whole thing and uh, make it all one piece so there's none of this stuff here none of the rubber clamps um you know i've got two of these so one here and one here i put the cover back on it fits 
Uh, another guy did this and he had a big 90 that swept out here, but I kind of like this cover. It keeps the mud off the intake tube and, you know, just less opportunity for a rock or something to puncture it. Um, it'd have to be a pretty good sized rock, but it does happen when you're running at, uh, running at speed. So yeah, I put the cover back on and, you know, you use the factory intake boot slides right in there and then you just tighten it up uh this is what i had laying around this is the only part i do not like and uh like i said i'm gonna make that out of aluminum and i may even incorporate the factory top hat somehow i don't know yet i thought about maybe bringing it up over into here and putting that factory uh I don't even know where the heck I got it at here. I did something with it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know where I set it. I'm just gonna, uh, oh well, it's around here somewhere. But anyways, there's like a little top hat that's in there and I thought, well, maybe I can uh, incorporate that or, or something. But this should help with, uh, you know, you can see I don't like these right here. So what I'll do is I'll TIG weld all this up and then I'll do away with this is the only piece of plastic on here and I epoxied it and like I said then then I'll uh, put some mounting tabs and mount it right to the right to the cage but I want to test this I'm gonna put a new air filter in and uh, like I said we're gonna go ride Sunday and see if any moisture at all gets in there, I can't see it doing that, you know, but uh, you never know, I guess. Um, like I said, I, I like the idea of going through this. I think this is like a 15 or $20 piece of plastic here. Uh, so if you ever wanna put it back to stock, you can, you just buy that piece and all the factory stuff goes right back on it. So no cutting or anything like that. But uh, it turned out okay. Like I said, I want to make a few tweaks to it here. I get my TIG welder to show up. I want to make it more symmetrical. The cage kind of leans in. But I am going to be cutting this cage down also when I get the TIG welder. So I'm going to take the factory cage and cut it down. And I'll make a video of that. I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to leave the front where it's at. But I'm going to take. I'm going to take probably. It's probably going to end up right in this area. The bar. Uh, so probably three inches, four inches out of it. And I don't know if I'll leave the factory roof on it or not. I was thinking about getting some of that poly stuff. I'm going to add some crossbars and make it a little bit stronger than what, what it is right now. And I think that'll be plenty for what I do. You know, I guess I'd like to do one of them brick city fab, uh, well that yourself ones, but, and you know, it's 900 bucks and then. You gotta spend a few hours welding everything up and send it out to powder coater and, and you, you know you probably have 1100 bucks into it by the time you're done and they're nice but i don't know if the windshields will work on them and all that stuff so i know i can make the windshield work you know i just got to take this gusset out right here and do some other stuff and just real quick i had a guy message me on facebook asking me some opinions on some things uh, on these unfortunately for some reason my messenger lost it. I don't know I looked at it and then I got a phone call and I went back to look at it and It was gone. So if you're watching this video you asked asked me my opinion on these what I thought compared to um, Polaris the four-seater I can't really speak to a four-seater talon so because I have yet to take one i was supposed to take one up on a demo ride but i've been so busy just haven't been able to do it so my thoughts are uh my thoughts are this you know if, if you can get away with not needing uh more power and uh you ride in the woods immediate to mediocre speed you know, I mean, you can get down with these X's. They're, they're very tight technical machines. Uh, I think they're pretty comfortable. 
I've driven the XPs, I've driven the Can-Ams. The Can-Ams are actually more comfortable for me. I have more leg room, but I don't like the laid, laid down uh, seating position. So it's a negative for me right now. Um, but you didn't ask about that. You asked my thoughts on the, on the XP. I wish I would have bought an R. Unfortunately, there was no R's out at the time I bought this machine. Uh, but now I wish I would have because I enjoy climbing big hills and and uh, and I would probably like the travel, a little bit more travel that the R offers, and the width isn't really a big deal to me. Um, and the little bit, you know, like the length would help in the climbing hills. You know, I think they're like four or five inches longer. So aside from that, like I said, I can compare it. My buddy bought a, a 19 four-seater, uh, what is it, Polaris RZR1000, um, naturally aspirated. So they're pretty much the same machine, just one's a four-seater and one's not. And uh, we ride together all the time. Um, you know, his is longer. He doesn't like like the roof that he got with the Polaris roof broke apart on it after like 400 miles is all busted up and he had to zip tie it all up and uh what else you know his doors rattle so bad in the back that he's got to put he puts a ratchet tie across them um you know to keep him from rattling when he's going down the trail he says just drives you crazy He's got in car a head communicator because his machine's pretty loud. Um, you know, Honda is quiet, so I can't, you know, uh, really. The Honda's super quiet. Like for me, it's a super quiet machine, and just cruising down the road, you know, I can have a conversation at 40 miles an hour with my wife, and it's and it's pretty easy, and I'm kind of hard of hearing. The quality of Honda, as far as fit and finish, seems to be way better than the Polaris. Um, his Polaris rides great. It jumps really good, uh, but it's a four-seater to a two-seater. So, you know, that length is, is helping it out substantially. You can see I still got my cover off because I got to pick up a filter tomorrow. But uh, uh, what else do I, can I compare them to? Uh, you know, these things seem to have strong axles in them, not breaking them. I haven't heard anybody breaking a front differential. Downfalls of the Honda. I think Honda, I think there's an issue there in the sub transmission on these and, and when they shift them into low, mine does it. It's popped out of gear several times on me and uh, I, I think uh, that's maybe a poor design on Honda's part. And I think I've mentioned that in other videos. I, uh, so, not that Polaris's don't do that. It's just, it's a little unnerving that you could lose low gear at any time. And then you have to drive in, you know, you can drive in high range without low gear. I guess that's the good thing. It's not going to leave you stranded if you break that gear completely. You just flip her to high range and you can run. But it is, it does suck. It's, it happened to me when we were out at Bundy. Oh, it happened to me when we were out at Bundy Hill. Uh, you know, I was climbing a hill and it popped out it under load. And everybody would be like, well, you got to adjust your shift cable. My shift cable's adjusted. And I've looked at it many of times. And uh, I'm not switching it too fast now. You know, and, and, and you shouldn't have to sit there and bang it back and forth to make sure it's in low range I, I think that's a I think it's just a poor design you know I was climbing a pretty big hill and it popped out and that could have been bad news you know I mean I mean luckily we were able to you know roll back down the hill but it wasn't a very good feeling because I, I should have been able to climb that hill pretty easily but you know my it popped out and it was pretty scary you know so the, compared to Polaris, he's put two belts in his. I've got about 150 more miles on mine. So he's put two belts on his naturally aspirated machine. And uh, he's had some water issues. Like when we were up at Drummond Island here in Michigan, 
and it really wasn't that deep of water. It was probably, it was just coming in the floorboards on the Honda, and I had the stock tires. I didn't have the 32s, and uh, his belt got wet, and it happened a couple times up there, and he was pretty frustrated. He's on 32s, which I was kind of surprised that it did that, and so his secondary, he's, he needs to, uh, not a secondary, but his primary, all his bushings and stuff like that and his rollers need to be replaced. Uh, it's just time. He doesn't really beat on the machine per se. He rides it, kind of like me. And he entered the race too that I entered, the endurance race. And yeah, he actually he actually won it. Um, so I don't know, you know, like it's a, it's a nice machine. I really can't say much bad about it other than some of the other stuff. He hasn't broken any any major parts he hasn't bent anything you know i bent an a-arm and my radius rods you know were junk uh the a-arm was completely my fault i hit a stump um you know i just picked a bad line and having 28 inch tires is unforgiving but uh aside from that i don't know it's really preference you know Everybody's going to tell you Honda, Honda, Honda. Uh, they all have their drawbacks, um, their pluses and their minuses. I haven't owned a Polaris. I've seen enough Polarises and seen a lot of broken ones. But, you know, you got to think that Polaris sells, compared to Honda, probably 20 units to one Honda. So they're just more of them out there. You know, they definitely have their weak points and, and you know i bought honda because i didn't want to deal with belts and all this so hopefully the clutches and all that stuff work out and they're you know not a big deal they last a really long time so that's my thoughts you know i, I guess if i had a family of four i would probably look real hard at a uh a talon live valve and uh, i really went back and forth about buying one myself but I just, I, I don't know, you know, I'd like to have the room, but then when I'm uphill killing, you know, or doing technical stuff, you know, a four seater's not gonna be able to do that. You know, I ride with a four seater all the time. I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying that's when the long wheel, real long wheelbase and, you know, it just, it becomes a problem. So, uh, I mean, you're not going to be, if you got young kids, you're not going to be out there just running that thing to the max in the trails so i guess for me it's if you're getting a four cylinder do you need a turbo if you're riding the dunes 100 percent need a turbo you know like there's if, you, if you're that's your thing is riding in the dunes there there is uh you're gonna need a turbo but you know the alternative is you're gonna go through belts you know and i don't care what you tell me you're gonna eat some belts here and there especially if you're riding at long distances and being hard on it. But, uh, you know, I, for what I do, I think this thing's fine. You know, it definitely has a few shortcomings. I wish they'd make the cab a little bit longer, a little more leg room for us taller guys. There's room there to do it. Um, and I've thought about moving the seat back like two inches, but, you know, it's like six hours worth of work probably for two inches. I don't, I don't know that it'd be that big of a deal. Um, but aside from that, you know, I've done quite a bit of upgrades on mine. I think, I think if I don't buy an R, which I'm you know, really trying not to, I almost took this thing in and traded it in. So that's my opinion. I mean, just go sit in them, drive them, see what you like. Every, everybody has their own thing. I think, I think Honda kind of hit a home run on their first swing at it. They've got a few things they need to address, which they're not doing. Uh, I would have liked to seen for the 2020s a live valve R two seater. Um, I probably have one sitting here, but I just it's really hard to justify taking the hit because I didn't get a smoking deal like they have out on these things now. I mean, you can buy these things for fifteen five, sixteen thousand bucks. You know, I paid nineteen five for mine. And I had a few things that can't, you know, a few Honda accessories with it. So I really only paid, I don't know, 18 7 for it. But still, 2500 bucks, big deal. 
I'm, I'm not. Uh, that's why I'm not gonna buy an R right now. I, I don't think I can get one for 17 out the door. But I, uh, I bought that and I'm buying a new enclosed trailer. Or I ordered a new enclosed trailer, so uh, kind of pissed away 20 grand right there, you know. So having another talent's kind of out of the question. But anyways, that's my opinion, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll keep you updated how this thing does, and when I get my TIG welder, I'll redo it all, and I'll show you guys my my roll cage and stuff like that when I when I go cutting it and do all that stuff. Maybe I'll time lapse it, see if I can get my GoPro, and I'm uh, a little electronically challenged sometimes, so and time limited, so enjoy.